I can only imagine people thinking, what? This is not my normal time to go live, but I am in here studying during this fast, looking at scriptures about the heart, evaluating my own heart, which means you start evaluating your identity. You start evaluating doing the things that God has called you to do or what are you missing in God? So it has been an amazing blessing. And I thought, you know what? I want to share. You know what? I want to go live. You know what? I just want to teach. And sometimes during prayer, I am able to teach some and then other times, yeah, not so much. So tonight I'm going to teach. Is that all right? Is that okay? Do y'all mind me teaching for a little bit? If you do, uh, you can always swipe left, swipe right, swipe up, swipe down, whatever the case may be. But I'm going to teach for a little while. Put this on your page. People don't necessarily know I'm on. Tag a few people. Let them know. Um, I think she's teaching. Yes, she's teaching. Do you want me to teach? I love teaching. But when you're fasting, when you're when you're seeking God, when you're evaluating your heart, your gifts get magnified. Somebody going to be blessed by that. Your gifts get magnified when you know that you're searching your heart. When God knows you're like, I need to get every wicked way out of me. Well, all of a sudden your gifts, you know, start to make room for you. Your gifts start bubbling up and I love to teach and I love to teach. So I've got a teaching tonight. It's not a webinar, but it could be. Uh but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna release this because I've been it's been on my mind for a while and um I want I want all of you to think this way. I'm gonna teach a couple of things. I want you if you're fasting if you're ever fasting regardless of whether you're fasting or not if you're listening to God, I want you to find out your identity. Because in understanding the help meet role, you have to also understand your identity. You have to know why God created you and also who God created you to be. Because he created me to be a help meet that's suitable. He created me to be the help meet to Gerald Benton Jr. But he also gave me gifts and callings. He also told me to be submitted and strong. And while you're submitted and strong, your gifts start bubbling up. And then you realize, why was I created? Yes, I was absolutely created to operate in my help meet role. When God saw Adam and said he did not need to be alone, he specifically said, I'm going to make him a helper. But that helper had an assignment. One of her assignments was her help meet role, but what about the other part of her? What about the things that she was called to do? And for me, it's teaching, but not just teaching. It's amazing to be able to have the honor of teaching more about the help meet role because this is tight entitled, I wish I knew about being a help meet earlier. I don't know about you, but if you follow my ministry, maybe that's not your uh, maybe that's not your 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 statement. Maybe maybe you've known for a long time. I can only speak for me. I wish I knew then <laughs> what I know now. If you follow me for any length of time, you know I say it often. I wish I knew about being a help me earlier. I wish I knew about being a help me before I got married. I wish I knew about how God felt about help me when I first got married. I wish I knew then what I know now. I wish I knew the difference between a help me and a wife. My God, because they are not the same. They are not the same. They are built different. A help me is a posture and a standard and a godly responsibility. And a wife, yes, is an important role, but it does not mean when you are a wife that you are also a helper. And so I wish I knew the difference. And when I when I when I've been studying this, I realized I have a Titus two assignment. What does that mean? Ah, I'm so glad you asked. I have a Titus two assignment now that I am older, and that's not a bad thing. I'm blessed to be up or up in age now that I am older. I am using my time 
as my Titus 2 assignment. So I want to teach on Titus 2. I want to teach on Titus 2 because I do wish I knew then what I know now. And so whatever I have, whatever I can do to help other people understand some of the things that I did not know, some of the things that I wish I knew. Let me let me let me give you the the foundation of why I I, I felt so strongly about this today. If you look on Titus 2, go with me to Titus 2. Yep, this is a whole teaching. You didn't know I'm popping up. It's yes, this that time. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles if you have something where you can read it. Listen to me, read it at the same time. Listen, and I tell you, get your Bibles out. It reads in Titus 2. This is the Amplified Classic because I love the Amplified Classic because I'm a teacher and I love to be able to expound on the word. But in Titus 2, the verse one, in verse 1, it says, but as for you, teach what is fitting and becoming to sound, wholesome doctrine the character and right living that identify true Christians. Uh-oh, yes, true Christians. Not just some that say they're Christians. I'm talking about being able to teach sound doctrine, fitting for the time, fitting for who's listening, fitting for who you're around, sound doctrine that identify. See, some things that we're doing while we're evaluating our hearts, when we understand how to be helped, it identifies whether or not we're truly Christians. When I started operating as a help me, I realized I don't know that I was as strong or as mature of a Christian as I thought I was. So as a Titus II woman of God, I need to make sure I'm teaching sound doctrine to identify true Christians. Now go down to verse three, because verse two, it talks about the men and no, no offense, but right now I'm talking about my Titus II assignment in the earth. And so verse three says, bid the older women similarly to be reverent and devout. That means I got to stick to this thing. People wonder why is she always talking about being a help me? I've got to be reverent to what God showed me. I've got to be devout to the assignment of God in their deportment as becomes those engaged in sacred service. I want two people to say this is a sacred service. When you do what God has called you to do, it's considered a sacred service. You don't just push it aside. You don't just ignore it. You wrap yourself around it and say, God, if you created me to do this, I'm about to do this and I'm going to do it well. I'm going to do it well and I'm going to do it right. It's going to be sacred to me not slanderers or slaves to drink. They are to give good counsel and be teachers of what is right and what is noble. My God, they are to give good counsel and be teachers of what is right and noble. We're going to put a pin there and come back to that. What is right according to being a help me? What is noble operating in your Christian assignment? It says, so that they will wisely train younger women to be sane and sober of mind, temperate, discipline, uh-oh, underline if you put stuff in underline, highlight if you highlight, write notes if you write notes, disciplined, and to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled, chaste, chaste, homemakers, good-natured, kind-hearted, adapting, uh-oh, that's my word, and subordinating themselves to their husbands that the word of God may not be exposed to reproach, blasphemed, or discredited. This word was so good to me. That's why I just felt like I needed to teach. That's why it's been so important to teach about help and hope. That's why it's been so t important to teach about, you know, the, the mind, your the ministry and your mindset, you know, being in, in ministry, your mindset and, and marriage. It's, it's, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. I have a Titus to assignment and something just ignited on the inside of me. Something just exploded when I saw that because that means I'm going to the next level. I'm, I'm about to shift some gears in this thing and explain 
how I wish I knew certain things that ended up happening in my marriage. I wish I knew earlier. And if I can take the time to teach individuals how to be disciplined, if I can take the time to teach individuals what it would take to be a self-controlled help me or a helper or understand the help me role, then I'm doing one of the things that God has called me to do. It's so imperative to know when you can explain to someone, we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. When you can explain to someone what happened in your marriage and in hopes, understand that it becomes good counsel and becomes good reading and becomes good teaching and becomes good education so that someone doesn't stumble where you stumble, so that someone doesn't fall into the same hole you fell into, so that someone doesn't make the same mistakes over and over and over again. I thank God for this word. It bids, he, th this word says, God is bidding older women. This was written by Paul. This was written by Paul. And when he wrote it, he was trying to establish the godly church. He was trying to establish godly character, godly teaching, godly leaders. So when godly leaders have an understanding of something, even if it's difficult, even if it's challenging, even if it will really challenge your flesh. When I tell you, when I learn and teach the help me role, a lot of times the way people look at me, the way people talk bad about me, the way people get frustrated with me, it'll challenge your flesh. But if you understand your assignment, it becomes rev it, it, it's, it's, it's reverent. It would be irreverent of me not to show you or tell you or teach you about the mistakes I made in my relationship, the mistakes I made in my marriage. Does that mean my husband never made mistakes? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. When you hear our testimony, when you hear our story, when you hear the things we went through, you will understand completely. Yes, there were some things that went on in our marriage. There were some things that went on in our in our in our relationship. And let me tell you, it was horrifying. The absolute worst things that could have happened. But I am here to say, when you understand God's assignment as a help me. When I finally understood what a help me meant to God, not what a help me meant to my husband, because yes, as I learned my help me role, my husband benefits. As I learned the things of God, my husband benefits. But the help me role was God's idea. And since it was God's idea, it needed to be something that was important to me. It needed to be something that I put my mind all of my of my training into and understood the difference between good and God. Oh, people that uh, that know me understand. I say this all the time. I learned the difference between good and evil. Oh yes, I grew up in church. I understood God. I love God. So I understood the difference between good and evil. But when you start to mature, there are some times where you've got to understand the difference between good and God. You got to understand that some things you can do, they aren't bad things, but they're not appropriate in that time. They don't fit your help me role. They may not be appropriate for your particular king. They may not be appropriate for your particular circumstance. So there is is a difference between good and God. So as I operate in this Titus 2 assignment, it's my it's my reverent sacred service to teach more individuals about how to be a helpmeet that's suitable, about how to identify. I know it sometimes is challenging. I know sometimes it hurts, but it's my sacred service. I want to give good counsel, not the counsel you just want to hear. Uh-oh, if I had something, mm, you know I would sip. It's not just going to be what you want to hear. It's going to be what the word of God says. This says, so that they will wisely train young women to be sane and sober of mind, temperate and disciplined. There's got to be more discipline in marriage. There's got to be more discipline in the body of Christ. When the body of Christ 
can read a scripture and then make a decision. Yes, God said, I got to forgive, but I don't want to. Yes, God said, I have to let that go, but I don't want to. Yes, God said this or said that in his word, but I don't think I feel like it. We need more discipline in the body of Christ. And I tell you what, if you train to be a help me, you will learn to be disciplined because God will turn things around and ask you to do things that you've never been asked to do before. And you'll have to dig deep. When I tell you, I had to, I can't speak for you, but I had to dig and keep on digging deep into my word. I wish I knew then what I know now. I didn't know about spiritual warfare. I didn't know I could pull down strongholds. I didn't know I could cancel things off of my bloodline. I didn't know I could decree and declare like I do now. I didn't know. So in this assignment, in this Titus 2 assignment, I had to learn to teach my body to get under subjection. And when I tell you, I, I love to be able to teach and train. I love to be able to teach individuals. I know you might want to do this, but let me tell you the benefits of doing it God's way. I know your flesh is saying this. I know your friends are saying that, but let me show you the benefits of doing things God's way, to be self-controlled and disciplined, to not move to the left or move to the right, to be an overcomer and not deal with the things of your past, to be able to cut things off of your bloodline. When I tell you, all of these things became so important to the benefit of how my marriage was healed. God did some new things, but now I can operate in what he's called me to operate in. So I just want to be able to share. As I, as I searched my heart, I was looking at what am I asking? What is God asking me to do? And he's asking me to be a Titus II woman in this season to tell women they can be submitted and strong. That does not mean just because the world says to, to do things the way God says it may seem weak to the world, but strong to God. May seem ridiculous to someone's friend, but strong to God. I'm going to ask you to be disciplined today. I'm going to ask you to understand, to be self-controlled, to be good natured, kind hearted, all of these things, but you got to be able to adapt to the will of God. If you're going to be a help me, you got to be able to adapt. You got to be able to be complimentary. You got to be able to be suitable and in being suitable, things may change in your life. When I, when, when, when I realized how many things I had to give up, I was like, God, how much more do I have to give up to be suitable? How much more do I have to give up to be good help? How much more do I have to sacrifice? But God just kept, kept taking things and taking things. And I said, Lord, if you're taking them, I'm going to have to trust you. If you're asking for them, I'm going to have to believe in your word. I'm going to have to believe in what you're doing. And what I'm realizing now, which is how I can operate as a Titus II woman, what I'm realizing now is he didn't just take it to take something away from me. What he did was he took it and he caused me to be able to grow up caused me to be able to mature. And he turned those things around. What the devil meant for bad, God took it and turned it around for my good. When he was taking it away from me, I was pouting at first. When he was taking things away from me, I was kicking and screaming. But eventually I got to a point where I realized you would never ask me to give you something if you weren't going to turn it around for my good. My Lord, you turned it around for my good. God, God reminded me a few years ago, you did not lose anything. You sold it. You didn't lose a thing. You sold it. You believed and you kept on believing. You trusted me when there was nothing to see. You believed what I said and you continued to believe even when there was no manifestation. I want to encourage somebody today that you can believe God even beyond manifestation because you're going to be disciplined. You're going to have self-control. But I am operating now in this Titus 2 assignment and realizing I got to go deeper. I've got to go harder. I've got to be more consistent with this thing. I'm not letting up. I'm not backing down. I'm not letting go of what I've learned because someone's going to listen. Someone's going to hear. Someone's going to realize, you know what? Because someone taught me sound doctrine. Because someone stood in the gap. 
because someone said, no, 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 don't do this, but make sure you do that. And wasn't moved by the fact that I didn't like it. Wasn't moved by the fact that my flesh started acting up. Wasn't moved by the fact that I made some faces in the natural. She was teaching me from the Titus 2 perspective. So right now in the name of Jesus. I'm operating this Titus 2 perspective. So those who don't want to be disciplined, they won't be able to hear me. Those who don't want to be uh, 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 operating in self-control. When I tell you, this says, so the word of God may not be exposed to reproach, blasphemed or discredited. I refuse to allow the word of God to be discredited. I refuse to allow the word of God to come up under reproach by not telling what I have learned by not sharing what went on in my relationship, by not sharing how challenging this was, but how good God has been. I'm telling you, I wish I knew then what I know now, but I promise to teach from the perspective that I've got an assignment to make sure that women know, and maybe they may, they may not even be younger than me, but this word is basically saying, if someone doesn't know, and you know, you have a responsibility as a Titus II woman to not only teach them, but hold them to it. Hold them to sound doctrine. Hold them to good counsel. Hold them to the word of God. So that's what you're going to get from me. That's what you're getting from me. That's what Help Me You is all about. That's what the Help Me Army is all about. That's what all this teaching is about. That's what Prayers for the King is about. That's what Help for the Help Me Book and Workbook is all about. And I'm encouraging every one of you to dig deep. Look into my life. Look into my testimony. Look into the things that happened to me because I'm honest about the things that I did wrong. I'm honest about the way I thought when God asked me things and, and how I said no at first and how I, how, I, how I did the wrong thing and I had to get myself together and apologize. How I put my husband out because I thought I had the right to. How I thought that I could speak to him any kind of way and be disrespectful because he was disrespecting me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I'm going to expose everything the enemy did and operate in this. And whoever will listen will become disciplined. Whoever will listen will know it's sound doctrine. And it's my option and my, 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 my responsibility. It's my sacred service. I'm operating in my sacred service. That's good to me. That's good to me. So when I tell you, if you're going to come along for the ride, you're going to hear more. If you're going to come along for the ride, I'm going to get tougher. If you're going to come along for the ride, I'm going to, to expose the devil even more. And sometimes people get a little frustrated. Sometimes they think that's kind of mean. It's not mean to tell the truth. It's not mean to hold you to the word. It's not mean to say this is out of order. Get This is in order. This is is your flesh. This is God. That's not mean. That's not mean. And we got to grow up in the church and stop calling hard things inappropriate. No, yes, there are times when people can say things that are inappropriate, but saying things that need to line up with God's will that hurt your flesh, that you may not like, that you may not be used to, you got it. As long as we can go to the word, as long as we can go to the word, and back it up. Oh, no. We got to look at, I'm supposed to forgive again. Okay. Love covers a multitude of sins. Okay. I'm supposed to help and not hinder. Okay. It might not be easy, but I'm going to accept it. I'm going to place the word in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against he. I might not sin against thee. I don't want to sin against God. So I've got to take the word and hide it in my heart and hide it in my heart. So more and more and more of this word is coming forth. More and more and more of this word, more and more and more of my testimony. Even if you've heard it a hundred times, you're gonna hear it a hundred and one. Cause I wanna tell the world about what I wish I knew. Before I mess things up, that's the Titus 2 assignment on my life. 
and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. When I was looking into my heart, like, Lord, what do you want more from me? What, what is, what, what's outside? What, is there something in me that you don't want? I want you to go to the next level in your Titus 2 assignment. So here we go. <laughs> this, is, this is your public service announcement. You're about to hear even more. You're about to hear even more. And, and then you, I'm going to remind you of what's already there. I'm going to remind you of what's already happened. I'm going to remind you of what's already written. And we're going to go back. We're going to repeat. We're going to cancel some things. So I'm going to pray. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pray. Because as a Titus 2 woman, that's my assignment. I'm going to pray. We're going to pull down some strongholds. Because there's about to be some information that's given that may be a little challenging in our flesh, but that doesn't make it wrong. It may be a little challenging to our emotions, but we're going to get it together. It may be a little challenging to what we're used to, but we're going to line ourselves up with the word of God. I just need to know who's with me. And even if, if it's just one, I'm going to do what the Lord says. I'm going to do what God says. Bidding, Paul said, I bid the older women to be reverent and devout. I'm going to be devout to this thing. Oh, yeah. When people get tired of hearing me say the word, help me. When people get tired of hearing me say, don't worry about that, pull down that stronghold. When people get tired of hearing me say, you can use your sword to cut that off of your emotions. You can use your sword to cut that off of your bloodline. I'm going to keep saying it because it's the assignment God gave me. And I'm, and I'm embracing it even more. Oh, I embraced it before. Oh, there was no problem sharing my, my testimony, but I'm going to embrace it even more, which means I, I shifted. Oh, yeah, it, the, I shifted. When, when, when I can look at this and see it like, oh, wait a minute. If I don't do what I'm called to do, it could cause the word of God to be under reproach. Oh, no. Mm -mm. No, we're not having that. We're not doing that. We're not accepting that. So I want to pray. I'm going to pray and we're going to take it up a notch. I'm going to pray and we're going to realize we got to be self-controlled if we're going to operate as a help me. I'm going to pray because we're going to be homemakers. We're going to be good natured. We're going to be submitted. We're going to be respectful. We're going to honor even when we don't feel like it. We're going to do this thing so we can teach our daughters. We're going to do this thing so we can be examples. We're going to do this thing so... Other people won't have to go through what I went through so that other people won't have to deal with what I dealt with. I wish I knew then what I know now. But because I learned some things and because God showed me some things and because God delivered me from some things, I'm going to operate in this Titus 2 assignment. So I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for all of the help meets that are going to the next level. I'm gonna pray for all of the help meets that may be having trouble with a little bit of discipline because as you hear more about what happened in my relationship, you're gonna be held accountable. To whom much is given, much is required. So when you hear my testimony, when you hear what God said to me, when I show you scripture after scripture after scripture, and revelation after revelation, you're held accountable for the help meet role. You're held accountable for what the what, what the word of God says. You're held accountable if you can hear God giving you some instructions and then you decide, I don't want to do it because I don't have enough strength. No, there's a way to get strength. Oh, I don't want to do this because it's too hard. No, there's a way to, to get healed. And it's in God's word. Oh, we're going, we're going in, we're going up, we're going, we're going to the next level. We're going to the next level. So I don't know who wants to be prayed for. I'm going to be praying for those who are on. I'm praying for those who are on replay. I'm praying and, and, and I want you to tag some people. I want you to put this on your page. I want you to let people know, oh, I'm going to the next level. I'm being, I'm being prayed for by a Titus 2 woman. I'm being taught by a Titus 2 woman. I want you to look back at some of the books you already purchased. I want you to look back at some of the broadcasts that you've already watched. I want you to look back at some of the things you've already, uh, the webinars you've already been on. I want you to realize this is coming from a Titus 2 assignment. It'll change the way you think about things.
Someone has an assignment from God to help me get disciplined, to help me with self-control, to help me line myself up with the word. It'll change the way you look at things. Uh, we're not going to take this casually. Oh, no, we're not going to take this casually. So I'm going to pray so we can get to the next level. I'm gonna pray that we can take it up a notch. I'm gonna pray that you understand the perspective in which things are gonna come from me. Oh, this ought to be good. Cause this, uh, uh, when you deal with some things and God opens the eyes of your understanding, oh yeah, you, you, you're, I'm held accountable for what I know. I'm held accountable for what, what just happened. All right, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Father God. We thank you, Father, for forgiving us. Lord, you have given us the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. So we ask you, Lord God, to forgive us. And when we ask you, Father, you forgive us as far as the East is from the West. You forget everything that's behind us. But Lord, I thank you for that opportunity. We're entering into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We're going to be thankful unto you. we we'll bless your mighty name in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for giving us the authority to put on the whole armor of God. Because we're going to cancel some things in the, in, the, in the spirit realm in Jesus' name. And we need protection from the wiles, the tricks, the schemes of the enemy. And you've given us that authority in your word to protect ourselves completely, to cover ourselves under the blood of Jesus, to put on the whole armor of God, because we're going to understand the word. And as we understand the word, it may get difficult, it may get trying, but the weapons can fall, but they will not prosper. They won't prosper because I have on the whole armor of God. My helmet of salvation, my breastplate of righteousness, my loins girded about with truth, my feet shard with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I got a sword of the spirit in a hand and shield of faith in the other hand. And because you're my rear guard, you cover me, Lord God. You cover every help me that's represented, every help me that wants to go to the next level, every help me that wants to be disciplined, every help me that wants to get, have self-control in the mighty name of Jesus. God, when we understand what someone else has gone through, when we understand that someone else overcame, you are not a respecter of person. So I speak that right now in Jesus name I say that because you are not a respecter of person every person listening to this prayer every individual that will lift their hand in submission every individual that will let go of their own anger let go of their own bitterness let go of their own unforgiveness Lord you will you will bless them in a mighty way if you did it for me Lord God I am bold enough to believe you'll do it for them in Jesus name I decree and declare I am praying over help me that are suitable I'm praying over individuals that won't give up. I'm praying over individuals that will stand and keep on standing then with their loins girded about with truth. I'm praying over individuals that will say, I'm going to stand here and regardless of what I see, I'm going to believe God and keep on believing because my loins are girded about with truth. Regardless of what's happening, I'm going to ask God to open the eyes of my understanding. I'm going to ask God to increase my faith. I'm speaking in increased faith right now in the name name of Jesus. I'm asking, Lord God, that you increase the faith of every help me be, 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 with understanding that when they hear a testimony, they will be able to grab a hold to it. I'm speaking right now prophetically. I'm asking you to grab a hold to my testimony and believe it. I'm asking you to grab a hold to God's word and believe it in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe right now I can cancel any kind of hope deferred. I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. I wipe out any hope deferred. I say right now, hope deferred is trying to make the heart sick and I bind that assignment in the name of Jesus. I have the authority and power to turn that around. I have the authority and power to eradicate hope deferred. In Jesus' name, we will hope and keep on hoping. In Jesus' name, we will hope and keep on hoping. We will stand and keep on standing. We will hope when things look crazy. We will hope when things look bad because God, faith without, I mean, when we understand faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. But to understand faith, we got to have hope. To understand and actually have faith, we have to have hope. So I pray that now over you now in Jesus' name. You have hope. You have hope. Grab a hold of it. It's your authority. Grab a hold of it. It's your portion. 
in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's the substance that, 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 that faith is made of. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but it's the evidence of things not seen. God, give us strength when we can't see. Give us supernatural strength when we cannot see things manifested. Give us supernatural strength. I decree and declare right now over every help me listening, every help me that will have an understanding of the help me role. I refuse to let go. God, I refuse to let go. We refuse collectively to let go. We will not let go until you bless our marriages. We will not let go until you bless our families. We will not let go until you bless us to be help me that are super. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're decreeing and declaring the thing. It's established where help meets that are suitable. We're decreeing and declaring the thing. It's established where help meets that are warriors in the spirit. We will not back down. We will not shrink back in Jesus' name. We won't stop doing what we're doing. We'll press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Increase our faith right now. Increase our faith. We can ask for it. We're asking for it, Father God. We'll ask and keep on asking. We'll knock and keep on knocking. Increase our faith because we're not letting you go, Lord God. You're going to bless our marriages. You're going to bless the, the, our children and our bloodline in the mighty name of Jesus. We're coming after generational curses, generational curses that tried to hinder us in the past. We refuse to allow every assignment of the enemy. We stop the assignments of the enemy before they even touch our children. I thank you, Father, that we utilize the authority and power over all powers of the enemy over all powers of the enemy every power of the enemy hinder trying to hinder your heart every power of the enemy trying to hinder your heart i say i dilute it now in the name of jesus we eradicate anything coming after the hearts or oh, we have a heart of flesh we're declaring it we're decreeing it we are we have the help me heart which is a heart of flesh we believe in the help meet role. We believe in your word. When you created us to help, we shall help. When you created us to help, we bind the assignment of the hinder me. We would not operate as hindrances. If we've operated as hindrances in the past, God forgive us. And because you've forgiven us as far as the East is from the West, we won't bring it up because you won't bring it up. We won't remind ourselves because you don't remind us in Jesus name. We will not be condemned. I crush the condemning spirit now. We will not be condemned for the things we did not know. We will not be condemned for the things we did not understand. We will not be condemned for the things we made a mistake. But tomorrow, tonight, today, moving forward, we will do what your word has said. God, I thank you, Lord God, that we become more disciplined in the spirit. We'll read and study your word. We'll read and study your word in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you and I praise you. That we'll study to show you ourselves approved. That we'll hide the word in our heart so we do not sin against you. We won't sin against our help meet role. We'll operate in it and understand it and teach others. We'll be an example of being submitted and strong, respectful, Lord God, honorable, Lord God understanding that we can we can give our our our, our, our priest provident king accolades and it doesn't and it doesn't cause us to have to shrink back we can do what your word says do father in jesus name right now i i command a spirit of strength to come we are strong in you lord and in the power of your might. Your might is directing us. Your might is covering us. Your might is leading us in this help meet role, Lord God. We need the strength supernaturally in Jesus' name. We will not get weary in well-doing. We will not get weary in well-doing. We will stand firm, Lord God. If we've been weary in well-doing, we shut that down now in the name of Jesus. We won't get weary in this thing. Oh, no, we're not going to get weary, but we're going to wear the devil down. 
Oh no, the devil doesn't get to wear me down. I'm gonna wear him down with fasting. I'm gonna wear his demons down with prayer. I'm gonna wear him down because I decree, because I declare, because I know the word, because I speak the word, because I live the word, because I believe the word. We're gonna wear the devil down as help me that are suitable and bring back marriages that are aligned with God's word. Bring back marriages that are aligned with God's will. Bring back the strength of the help me role in the mighty name of Jesus. And because we operate in the help me role, we will cover our kings. We will honor them and respect them. We will assist them as you have called forth for us to assist them. We will be good help. In Jesus name, we'll be good help. We'll be good help. We are good help. I'm making that declaration. I'm coming into agreement with those who are praying with me. I'm decreeing it and declaring it as a Titus 2 woman. It's an assignment, a sacred service, a sacred service that I will raise up help meets that are disciplining of self-control. I will raise up help meets that understand their, their, their biblical role in the family. I will raise up help meets that aren't afraid of the enemy and know not only their role, but their posture, not only their posture, but their authority and power in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I crush backlash and retaliation. The enemy will not touch this prayer, will not touch the help meets that are praying with me. It will not touch those that are here this prayer later in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that you give us revelation. I thank you, Lord God, that you gave us a sword and we will use it and tell the enemy the, the, the curse we have seen before. We will see no more. We will see no more. And as we fast and pray and decree and declare and study, we believe your word shall come to pass. We believe the vision that you told us to write down. We believe what you told us in dreams and vision. We believe your word. We believe your word. So backlash and retaliation can't touch this prayer. There will be nothing the enemy can do about what we're praying. You said one will put a thousand to flight to 10,000. You said there's power in agreement and we're believing it in Jesus name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are good help. You are suitable, adaptable, and you are complimentary. You will not slow down in this role. You will not give up. You will obey the word of God and what he's asking you to do. You will seek the help you need to follow the instructions you've been given. You will seek the help you need to follow the instructions God has given you. Giving up on instructions from God is not an option. It's not an option. Giving up on instructions from God is not an option. And not knowing God's instructions is not an option. One of the two, you got to study and get it done. You've got to study and get it done. You got to heal so you can hear God's word and God's instructions. And then you have to get strong enough to obey them. There is no other option. You heal so you can hear and you get strong enough to obey. That is it. That is it. Nothing else matters. Because once you heal enough to hear God's will, God's word, God's way, God's instructions, everything else will line up. 
Because when we follow God's instructions, everything else lines up. Everything else lines up. But that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. That doesn't mean it won't take work. That doesn't mean it won't take time. That doesn't mean you won't have to study and read and sow and do things that are outside of the norm. That's not what it means. That's why here, what I'm saying is going to require that we get more self-control and discipline. And people who do not like it, you need more self-control. You need more discipline. It's the people that don't like it that need it the most. My Lord, how about that? If you don't get it from me, you better get it from someone. Doesn't have to be me. But you got to be strong enough, obedient enough to follow God's word. Follow God's will and his instructions. Regardless. Amen? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. Instructions from God are not optional. <laughs> they're not optional. And when you think they're optional, you need more strength. When you're starting to think about other options besides God's assignment, besides God's instructions, you need more discipline. You need more self-control. You need more understanding. You need more power and authority. You need more healing. Seek it. And do not stop until you get it. Do not stop until you get it. When you know you're wavering, God says, do not get weary in well-doing. That's why. That's why he tells us not to get weary in well-doing. You can do good things and then get weary. And God is like, you can't get weary in well-doing. When you're doing the right thing, you keep asking God for more strength, so do not get weary in the well-doing. Just because you did, I did that already. Okay. Okay. Amen. Bless the Lord for when you did it before. Don't get weary in well-doing. Keep doing it. Who told you to stop? Did God tell you to stop? If he did, then you're following instructions. This shouldn't offend you. <laughs> If God told you not to do something, then I'm not talking to you. So don't get offended. No need to be offended because if you do what God tells you to do and someone says something, you never get offended. You don't need to. You're doing God's will. You only get offended if someone says something and you know God said it and it's been challenging. It's been difficult. You haven't been able to figure it out or it's taken some time. Oh, yeah, well, don't get weary and well doing. Don't do it. The, the Bible says don't do it. So I'm going to say Titus 2 assignment. Don't do it. Well, if I've been doing it for so, so this amount of time, you need to feel, feel bad. No, if the Bible doesn't tell me to feel bad for you, I'm not. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Don't get weary. So that means cancel weariness, shut down tiredness, cancel it, cr crush it, annihilate it, speak strength over it immediately with authority and power and knowledge of the word. Oh, you don't know? Get to know. The Bible's available. It is written. Find out what it is written. Find out what's written and speak it. Find out what's written and declare it. Find out what's written and hold on to it. That's what has to happen. Instead of weariness, instead of brokenness, instead of tiredness, instead of frustration, instead of anger, find out what is written. And then have some self-control. Have some discipline. Line up with his word. immediately and surround yourself with people who are doing the same 
Because when you want to be weary, when you want to give up, when you don't want to do something, you don't want to hear those same words from people who are around you. If you do, it'll weigh on you like a brick. It'll weigh on you like a brick. So you better be careful in this season who you're around. You better be careful in this season who's speaking to you. Because you need strength and foolishness does not give you strength. Lies don't give you strength. Ignorance does not give you strength. Lies don't give you strength. Ignorance does not give you strength. It takes it away. It literally depletes you. So if you wonder why you're depleted, check what's going on in your ears. Check what you're watching, what you're listening to, who you're listening to. Because lies deplete. That's the enemy's job to try to take your strength. Mm -mm. God says the joy of him, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Go get it. Go get it. Go get the joy. Command it to come. Decree it. Declare it. Establish it. Command it to come forth. That's where the strength is. It's good. It's good. Well, I'm thankful for each of you. I'm going to encourage you, those of you who are married or desire to be married, when I tell you uh, some major, major things are happening with the marriage retreat, you're going to hear me talk about it until our anniversary. When I tell you I would sow a seed into this marriage retreat, I would, I would ask God, and I'm going to say this as I speak it, as I teach more discipline, that's one of the things that God has been saying. Don't, don't hold back on telling people to sow seed. If you're not asked, if God's not asking you to sow a seed, don't worry about it. But I'm going to teach so that those who don't know to ask will ask. And it doesn't matter what other people think about it. I got to please God. God says to encourage seed sowing because i understand the harvest that comes from it because i'm a benefit what would i look like benefiting from seed time and harvest and being a teacher of the word and not teaching people about seed time and harvest what kind of teacher would that be what kind of individual who's operating in Titus 2 would benefit from seed sowing, would benefit from tithes, would benefit from forgiveness, would benefit from being a help me and not teach it and tell others? That makes absolutely no sense. None. None whatsoever. So I know the benefit of sowing in good ground. Seed time and harvest is, is something that is absolutely imperative to growth. You have to plant seed in order to expect a harvest. Some of you are looking for a harvest and haven't even planted seeds. Or you're looking for a big harvest, but you planted only one seed. What in the world are you looking for? No need to look. There's no harvest to come. So in this season, please ask God where to sow your seeds, where to pay your tithes, where, because I'm looking for a harvest and I want to teach those who have harvest. I want to be surrounded by people who are, who are, who are dealing with harvest issues. We got so much going on. It's, it's, it's one of those Amos 9 and 13. It's, it's, it's so, things are happening so fast, their heads are swimming. That's what I'm looking for. Why would I want that over my life and not want that over those who I teach, train, and, and, uh, and cover? Oh, no. I want everybody to have it. So I'm telling you, I'm, I'm encouraging you to make sure you go to our website and put 
uh, remember the instructions. Put marriage retreat and then name your seed. Put marriage retreat and then name your seed and start commanding it. Uh, we, we, we don't leave until close until our anniversary. So it's all this month. We're, we're encouraging people because the, the uh, marriage retreat is on our anniversary, the 23rd of March. Um, those who have been blessing us even for our anniversary, thank you for that. But I'm talking about specifically sowing the seed to the marriage retreat. That's, 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 that's what I'm, um, I'm encouraging you to do. Amen. I pray this helped and blessed you, but even if it didn't, I needed to get this off when I, when I was uh, seeking God and I like, Lord, woo, Jesus, my Lord, Jesus, I am uh, loving what I saw in Titus two. Absolutely loving it. So I want all of you, especially those in my mentoring programs, listen up. <laughs> When I start going in and shifting gears, think Titus 2 and go back to it and say, oh, yeah, that's what she's doing. It'll help you. Oh, it'll help you. I might, might need to wear a hat that says I'm, I'm operating in Titus 2. <laughs> I'm operating in Titus 2. But, but, hey, calm down. Titus 2. Okay. Yes. Everybody, we got that. I want you to put it on the screen, Titus 2. Oh, yeah, this is this is one of those examples of her operating in Titus 2, okay? I'm loving that. Yay! I'm going to have to put that. I got to write that down. I'm operating in Titus 2. Yes. Amen. I, I, yeah, I'm loving that. Understand it. It's, it's, it's just Titus 2. Yeah, it's just, it's just Titus 2. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes, it's just Titus 2. It's I'm 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 going to be all right. I'm I'm going to be all right. It's Titus 2. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. It's my Titus 2 assignment. It's going to be all right. She's just okay, take a, you take a deep breath and say Titus 2. You take a deep breath is all. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, I, I'm, I'm learning from this. I'm getting self-control from this. I'm getting, I, I, I've got to understand where she's coming from. Because when you understand where someone's coming from, you receive differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, you receive differently. My Lord, that's going to be good. I got to get some Titus 2 gear, submitted and strong. Titus 2. <laughs> Amen. Well, have an amazing night, day, whatever it is for you. Uh, 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 bless God for every one of you that popped on, that sowed seeds, that that tagged some people. Thank you for that. You didn't know I was coming on and y'all showed up. It, I appreciate y'all, you know, all of that. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you. Who's on with me? Yep, I see you all. Yes. She's operating in Titus 2. Cindy, you can operate in Titus 2 with me. Okay, come on. Uh-huh. You said Glamour Rich. You said it this was directly for me at this very moment. Well, God is so awesome. Whoo! Now that's awesome. At this very moment. You needed it at this very moment. And I don't normally come on. You you should feel the presence of God all in your home. If this is not a time I normally come on and you needed something in this very moment, you better review everything I said. You might want to pl play this over again. You got to play, pray, uh, pray and play this over again. Yes, my God. Yes, this is imperative. Okay. All right. Amen. You needed that. Kim needed it. Well, I'm glad God, you know what? See what happens when you obey? Now, what if I didn't obey? See what happens when you don't obey? Someone needs something you have. And then you they they didn't get it because you, you didn't do it. See, see, look at that. Play and pray this over again. Play it over, pray it over. Play it over, pray it over. 
to get it all on the inside of you, especially if you plan on following me or being under my, my, my covering and teaching, especially you need to play it over, pray it over. You need to play it over, pray it over. If you're going to stay with me, how about that? Because it's necessary for where we're going. And it's good. This is not negative. It's positive. Lord have mercy. We're doing the kingdom work. Yay. Glory to God. All right, Miss Mathis. You needed it. You need to get going. You needed it. You need to get uh, strapped. Let's get strapped up. Don't just need this message. Get strapped up. You know I'm not going to play. Get strapped up amen amen did you tag someone did everybody tag someone did everybody put this on the page i need you to put this on your page and put this in someone's inbox and say oh you need to play and pray this <laughs> sharon said replay and pray come on prophet to sharon tell them ambassador sharon i should say tell them uh replay and pray all right well maybe prophet is sharing i could say that too amen i won't hold back oh stop your weariness in the tracks boom i hate that devil i hate the devil so the devil was trying to get you weary he's a liar the devil was trying to get you weary he's a liar Mm -mm. you use your authority are you in my army i don't know who glamour rich is if you're in my army you better use some of your resources if you're not in the army you better use your resources lock loaded and strap all right now i like that let's do that all right did everybody have their books i'm gonna be telling it okay wait let me see uh i'm gonna be um talking about all these assignments you cannot say you're learning and you're not reading and you're not studying and you're not using your gifts and resources so i'm gonna put you to work and uh you need to get your books so i want the book emoji for those that are on that have their that have their gear you, you got your you got your gear because who goes to school with no books and expects to learn okay all right nicola thank you all of them i gotta read purple book is all four thank you Thank you, Kim and Cindy. Get all of them. I need. Now, did you use them? I'm not. Get them. Step one. Use them. Step two. Okay. Yes. Okay, ladies, you're doing. You, you're making me happy as a teacher. Get the book. Get your helper to help me. And then some of you. You know you need to be signed up for either the army or help meet you. And I'm going to put the help meet you. That's the online courses for your help meet role. But you can go at your own pace. Go to the website and see if that's for you. Or to help meet army, you got to go to the Gerald and Yvette website. Now, you want discipline and you know good and well you need discipline. Get it. But don't sign up for the army and then be so undisciplined that you don't go to training. You want to tell me? Why you think you're going to get disciplined by joining a help me army and then not going to training? I need you to process that. Lord have mercy. The God, God told me to join the help me army and then you don't go to training. God did not tell you to join the help me army and then not go to training. He intended for you to go to the uh, uh, enlist in the Help Me Army because you needed discipline, which is in the training. I'm not impressed with people who sign up and then don't get trained. What's the point? Yeah, then you're just not a good steward. You're not a good steward. 
because you paid for something and you're not even getting what God told you to get. Remember we talked about if you know God told you to do something and you don't do it, that's disobedience. I'm coming for disobedience. I'm coming for it. Oh, I'm coming hard. I'm coming for it. I'm coming for it. Mm -hmm. I'm coming for all the disobedient people. If you enlisted somewhere along the line, because nobody enlists under me, unless God says so. I'm just saying that you know good and well. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> God had to tell you. Oh, yes. So while you're in, you're supposed to be training. And then we got people that come in, leave, and don't get half the training they're supposed to get. And then they're gone. You got half the training you need and you wonder why you're struggling? I'm not wondering. You shouldn't wonder. I'm not talking about people who come in, get what they need and leave. That's what you're supposed to do. I'm talking about coming in and skipping. What? You need discipline. So you sign up to get discipline and you're undisciplined in getting the discipline. Whew. Get it together. All right. Okay. So let's get this together. You need discipline. You need self-control. You need training. You need to learn how to cast out devils, pull down strongholds, cover yourself and pray. I'm trying to teach people to pray. They don't want to pray. Um, I don't understand. What do you mean you don't want to pray? No, you're going to pray. Yeah, you're going to pray. I'm going to teach you how to pray. I'm going to teach you how to get strong. I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm going to teach you how to be strong. Let's do this. Okay? All right. Amen. All right. Replay and pray. Amen. For those who, who missed the beginning, y'all are like, oh, please get off so that I can watch the beginning. <laughs> I heard somebody say, if they get off, if they finish, I can watch the beginning. All right. Let me get off so you can watch the beginning. All right. Put this in somebody's page. I mean, um, encourage or help me today. Amen. I will see you all. If you follow my Impart Ministries International page, um, Impart Ministries International page, I don't know if it's on here. Uh. If you follow our Impart Ministries International page, I uh, will be on. My husband and I do a message at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time every Sunday. Um, we will be the we have a message on the mountain for our church, Impart Ministries International. Make sure you're doing <laughs> what you should. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. I hope I didn't forget anything. I got to remind people some, um, I think I was supposed to remind people of something, but now I forgot. What was I supposed to remind you of? Oh, well, I'll, I'll remind y'all on Tuesday if I forgot something. Amen. Good night, everyone. Was I supposed to remind anybody of anything? Lord. I forgot if I did. All right. I see you on Prayer for the Kings, Tuesday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night.